Hello and welcome to the 90 Minute Cynic Podcast. I'm your host Chris Gallagher and I'm joined by Christopher Somani. Good evening. Louis McCaffrey. Hello Christopher. Dermot Coyle. Evening. And we've got Christian Wolfe back in the studio with us. Hello Christian. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks very much for coming along Christian. Um, so we're just going to talk, um, as we always do, uh, probably start with Celtic. We have Christian here to get a little bit more kind of information and what he thinks of how Dial is doing um, in terms of you know his time at Celtic so far, um, but yeah, firstly I'll get the highlight of the weekend in terms of football. Louis, do you have a highlight? No. Okay, great. Um, do you have a highlight, Chris? Um, well, the Celtic result because it's a win, and that's what we needed. And um, we were just talking about I enjoyed the Milan Parma game. Yeah. Thought it was hilarious how bad the defending was, but it was great to watch. But isn't uh, Serie A all about defending? That's what, you know... That's what the kids used to say, That's Chris, we... but it's all about crap defending now and lots of goals. Yeah, Christian, do you have a highlight from the weekend? or I think it's odd beating Liking 4-1, actually. To... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say I think it's odd, odd beating Liking 4-1 in the Norwegian League. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So. Who's top <laughs> in the Norwegian League at the moment? <laughs> it's uh, it's Molde, actually. Molde, yeah. How, how, how is it going in Termo? Well, give us a brief kind of overview. Well, pretty much, it's pretty much been decided for the last, I was going to say, the whole season. Um, Molde is eight points ahead. They're only eight points ahead because Odd, which is actually quite a mid-range team, has had a very good season. And they're still sort of um, on the tails. But other than that, it's been it's been an unusual, unpredictable Norwegian league. Um, Strömskos have... Fallen off a little bit since Dyla left. Fifth yeah. place, about eight points behind Europe now. Uh, sorry, five points behind Europe, which it probably won't make up in the last seven, seven games. A couple of surprises. Bob Bradley doing well? Do you know, we'll get to Bob you Bradley because so, uh, Michael Chapman has sent us in a few but, questions. But stop me when I talk about Norwegian football because well, it's, listen, it's hey, just the whole podcast just going to be about that. No, oh. we're, we're, we're interested to find out. Sorry, sorry Rosenberg? Where are they? Rosenberg is in third, which is two places below where they should be, mm. <laughs> all things being equal. Um, sector manager, again, and it's just not in a very good place in terms of the management of the club, whereas pretty much the board and sporting director just, they're going down the bottom now, they're pretty much the last 10 years. And they have by far the most money of everybody, and they should be top of the league every year, but they're not. And it's purely, I think, uh, a mismanagement of the club. I, uh, I don't. Just, just what's your highlight of the weekend? Uh, probably Southampton putting the final nail in uh, Pardew's coffin. Hopefully. I, ah, that, I, I, I was checking that. That's my highlight as well. Etting against Pardew. Um, yeah, I, we're, not, we're not fans of uh, Alan Pardew. Um, because he's just rubbish and not a very nice man. Um, but yeah, okay, so that terrific. Uh, my highlight of the weekend, um, I don't know. I've, there, was, there was quite a few highlights. This, this, I, I like to see, I, you know, obviously this might be, go against Christian's thoughts, but um, Aston Villa um, winning, a, winning at Anfield. Yeah, I was avoiding that. Yeah, um, it got, obviously caused a Paul Lambert. What, what I think is quite funny now is that people are, are attributing um, Villa doing well with Roy Keane coming in. And that doesn't really doesn't sit well with me. Thoughts on that? Um, I don't. If only he came to Celtic. Yeah. Maybe he's freshened it up a bit. I don't know, but I, 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 don't, I think Lambert got a bit of a hard time off a lot of people. I think Villa looked as if they could be a good team. Was, I don't know if you know what I mean by that. They looked as if they were part of the way there in the last few seasons, and maybe they've just you know taken that next step. Aye, I think I'd agree with that. I think Villa were a work in progress. Uh, and Lambert needed time. I think the thing about Keane having an effect, I mean, it's not happened anywhere else, so why people would suddenly think it was he was the reason that Villa kind of baffles me. Bri- briefly at Sunderland, to be fair to him, but after that, I think he just pissed a lot of folk off by shouting at them. Yeah, um, he's a very divisive character, so he is. Uh, okay, so as I say, we always usually start with Celtic, so let's start with Celtic. Um, actually, well, Christian, we'll come to you first. Um, we had you on the podcast uh, before, you know, when Dyla was appointed. Um, how do you think he's performed so far? Um, he's obviously had a lot of um, obstacles in his way, but how do you think he's dealt with it? I think it's been a, it's obviously been a, a difficult start for him. I, I think 
he probably hoped for a smoother entrance, but I also think that he was was going to come a point where he was going to get tested um, sooner rather than later. I think it's sooner because of a couple of things. I don't think he's, as I said at the time as well, his experience is is good to know, but it's, it's not. He it's don't have a vast experience, especially in Europe. So I think he's he's, he's, he's mismanaged a couple of the games tactically, and I think he he knows that. I don't think he's been helped, and he's probably been surprised. I've actually been surprised how per the quality of the squad is as well. So I think there's a combination of things. Could he have done better in the first 12 games? Yes, I definitely think he could. It's 12 games, a ridiculous small sample to, to judge that, and how is, he, how is he going to be? Yes, as well. So I, I don't think he'll be, be happy with the start, but I don't think he'll be despondent or anything either. I, I think he knows... It, you you kind of got now that the Aberdeen game was pretty much the first game after you, you reset the season. You reset the season because you know what kind of European qualification you're going to be in and you know what kind of players you're going to have. And in, in Celtic, those two unknowns are probably bigger unknowns than for any, any other club because so much of your season, so much of your transfer, so much of your squad depends on those two. So you, you kind of have a reset button now after the after the transfer window ended. So it'll be interesting to see... How he, how he adapts, how he keeps adapting now that probably like the real season has probably started. Yeah. Um, what you, what are your guys' thoughts on what Christian's saying there? Are you, uh, do you think that the the quality of the squad surprised him? Because that's a, that's a really good point um, in terms of him coming from from Godstad to Celtic and just obviously Celtic being Champions League um, qualifiers. What do you think about that? I think it's perhaps the case he might not have known the size of the the job in terms of overhauling the squad was. Um, I think we're pretty vocal about it on this podcast. Not a lot of Celtic fans necessarily agree with that. Um, I think a lot of people thought the squad was good enough. Um, Dyla may have thought the same. He may have thought they got to the Champions League last season. They performed OK. They won the league um, at a canter. But in terms of the style of play that, that Dyla wants to play, it's really clear that the squad that we had maybe not now with the additions but the squad that we had at the start of the season was not fit for purpose um, and perhaps he was surprised by that um, I wouldn't have been I would have known um, with the players that we had he would have struggled to play the high tempo game that he liked to Yeah, absolutely. I think there's probably it's always going to be difficult at the start when um, he's coming from a from the Norwegian league and no disrespect to him but I wouldn't imagine that a lot of the Celtic players would have known much about Ronnie Dyer when he came in and then he's got to handle the expectation of the fans and he's got to enter that dressing room with players that he doesn't know and he obviously has a different style of play that he wants to try and implement from the previous manager so I think it maybe wasn't uh, as much the case of the players weren't totally good enough I think it's maybe they just didn't fit with what he wanted and he wanted to try and change them obviously now he's brought in a few players there are more players that he is specifically looking to play a certain type of football with i.e. wingers with a bit of pace so I mean he's setting them up in a different way and he's had the chance to add some players to it now so now is the time where I think we really start judging him I mean, obviously we're all disappointed that the start they had happened, but at the same time, there was a lot of things stacked against them that he had to try and overcome. Well, I think that's the point about the squad he inherited and the one he wants to build. Now, the question then is to get through the Champions League qualifiers and even to get through the first half of the season, how pragmatic are you? Do you go the full route and just say, okay, this is my squad, I'm going to play the football that that squad would be best adapted to? Or do you go completely the other way and say, I'm going to play my system regardless of the players, and then over time I'll, I'll bring the players I need in, or the players here will learn and understand that? Where I think is maybe the biggest fault the first couple of months has been, it's kind of fallen between those two stools. He hasn't committed fully to one or the other. And that's an easy, that's a neat, lazy analysis in one way, but it is kind of thing where he's, he's seemed to have been chopping and changing because it's not quite, okay, I should be, probably be a bit pragmatic here or, you know, screw it, I'm just going to go all out. So he hasn't 
kind maybe that's a sense of that maybe he's not quite as confident yet in you know his presence there or what he wants to achieve or maybe he's fast and fully decided on what he should be doing and he's kind of fallen between those two stools I, I think that's a really good point. I think that he's, he's actually he's been caught out. Uh, Champions League qualification really does mean a lot to Celtic in terms of the money he brought in and a more pragmatic approach of, right, let's just get through it with what we've got. I think in sort of retrospect, we we'll maybe regret trying to change stuff a bit too early. If we got through, the money's pretty much in the bag and you've got a wee bit of time to get to bring the changes through then. On the other hand, I mean, I think it's a brave thing to do, and I think he will have been surprised, you know. He'll have looked at the Celtic squad, and he will have thought, you know, it's packed full of internationalists. You know, anyone that's seen F.E. Ambrose recently, you know, <laughs> they'll just be kind of astounded that he was playing at the World Cup, and I think Dial is, probably has got a, a big shock. Yeah. Um, I, absolutely, I, I totally see that as well. Um just, as you, I take your point, Christian, about you know that maybe it wasn't need a little bit of pragmatism to get through the, the qualifiers. But we did have four. <laughs> it's it's not like we had one qualifier. We we we'd four or six. We'd sorry, we'd six. Um, so that's you know where, as you say, people maybe question them. Just out of curiosity, see in terms of Norway and the Norwegian media, are they kind of keeping a close watch on Dyla or is it very much out of sight, out of mind sort of thing? No, I think it's very close. I think most of the Champions League games were broadcast as well. And if you follow, you know, just on Twitter, you, Celtic is a lot more mentioned and a lot more followed by the journalists uh, and anybody else as it is. So it's, it's a very close eye on him now. It's probably almost got more Norwegian media attention on him now than it was in Norway. Um, so, so it's definitely, as I said before, I think it's, it's, it's by far the biggest club in, any Norwegian has ever managed. So, yeah, the attention is there. Yeah, you get where you go. Um, Christian, I just wanted to touch on the levels of fitness in the Celtic squad. Uh, looking back uh, with hindsight, it seems to me that I don't think the levels, the fitness levels of the squad were up to where, up to what Dyla would expect of his squad. Um, recently, I've seen the fitness is obviously getting better amongst the squad. It's the season's coming on. I think obviously his training methods have come in, mm. and the last few games that we've seen Celtic, I think we've had a lot of possession and we've not been clinical enough. And I think the new strikers probably aren't up to speed. Do you think it's fair to say, once the squad are at the condition that Dyla wants, do you think? We'll We'll see see them perform better. Yeah, I think they will. I mean, there's two factors to that. I think Norwegian football and Norwegian training methods in themselves puts a little big emphasis on conditioning. I think Dela's preferred style of play, you know, especially with the pressing, in, forces you to be very well conditioned. And I think you know from the Celtic games I've seen so far, it's been quite a almost an incredible amount of, of personal errors and personal mistakes. Now, that can come from lapse of concentration more than anything, but it's also, you know, the tougher you have to work during a game, the more chances, well, the more chances there is for you making personal errors as well and, and switching off. So I think that might be, a, a, especially when we talk about F. Ambrose as well, you know, that could be a, a, an impact on that, you know, because you have to work harder during a game it, it, it also, while it's it, it forces you, it is easy to make a mistake as well if you do that. So, so I think it, it all hangs together as well. Now they will be fitter. They need to learn to be able to learn to do the things uh, in a game when they're tired, and to do them in a higher speed as well. So, so it's all combined. Um, we, um, no, well, just while we're on the subject of the kind of squad and things, I was just. Um, Obviously, when Dyla first came in and during pre-season, he, I mean, he came in. He was talking about how he wanted to uh, develop youth players and things like that. And in pre-season, there was quite a few of the youth players featured, um, which was kind of to be expected as he was trying to evaluate the squad and things like that. And then we've seen in the first. Uh, few games, youth players were definitely on the bench and if not playing, like so Liam. 